Are you tired of not having control over your layups? Do you want to know how to do high pickups, low swing throughs, the fastest scoops, the highest floaters, the smoothest reverses, and the toughest jellies? Then, welcome to Bag Talk with T. And on today's episode, we're going to go over how to draw fouls on every single layup. Let's get into it. There are three general ways to draw fouls on every layup. The first way is if you pump fake and they jump at you and then you follow through with the layup. The second way is if they reach at you while you're going for your layup. And the third way is if they jump to the side of you, meaning they don't get a good contest. They're kind of not blocking the shot. They're just sort of tapping your wrist or tapping your leg or something like that while you're going up. It just looks awkward like they're jumping to the side of you. The first one is the one I want to emphasize and the one you're going to have the most control over. You want to practice hop steps and you want to practice pump faking on your hop steps. To do this, generally, you're going to hold R2. You're going to run into the paint. You're going to tap square on PlayStation or X on Xbox. You can also use the right stick, but it will be easier if you use the shoot button to do this. You tap it once, then you let go. This will give you an animation and you can jump to the right by holding your left stick to the right, or you can jump to the left by holding it to the left. Once you pump fake, if the defender jumps, go straight up with it. Don't wait. Don't hesitate. Don't wait for him to fall back down. You got to do it while he's in the air. And then remember this, every single and one animation you get with a layup, you can time. If you expect to time it, you can time it green 100% of the time. Even if it looks like it's going to be 100% smothered, I promise they will go in. Practice it, meter off because you get a boost or meter on if you just don't feel comfortable with that. Work your way up to it. I do meter off because it's more comfortable for me. To talk about the first way a little more, in order to get people to jump, you'll obviously have to hit a couple layups first or a couple shots first in order to make them jump at you. Typically, these shots will be your fast scoops and your high floaters. For me right now, I'm using the John Morant layup package. It has one of the highest floaters in the game going towards his offhand, meaning if you're right-handed and you take a floater going to your left, attacking the basket, he will do a very high floater animation and he'll kind of jump stop to give him a little more height on the floater. Very easy to time, very easy to get open on it. Very fast as well, very high. The other one is the scoop animation. If you blow by your man wrapping around the top of the key and then you just hold to the right, if the ball's in the right hand or hold to the left, if the ball's in the left hand, I usually let go of sprints just to make it easier. Your player will do a scoop animation, time the animation through. You can make some very tough lays that way and you can kind of sneak it past the defense while they're staying down or jumping late if they're not ready. This will get the defense sort of aggravated. They'll want to block you next time. They'll want to prepare. So they're gonna try to jump earlier next time. This is when you do a hop step, you pump fake, you draw the foul, and then you green the end one works more than you'd think the next way is if you notice if you notice the defenders pinching a lot whether it's off the corner or off the wing usually off the corner is a little bit easier especially if they're sort of playing a drop pinch meaning they're coming off the man and sagging into the paint a little bit maybe you've been finishing a lot maybe you've been dunking maybe you're doing a lot of lays already you can hop step through that and once you get the reach coming off the corner just finish through with the layup regardless because that way you'll get to shoot free throws plus if you make the shot it counts right so you can finish that through that's green now it's three points instead of two points and again easier to time than you think it's something most people don't think about because most people tighten up against the pinch or they try to fly through and get a really fast dunk or a really fast scoop that doesn't always work sometimes you want to hop through because they're already going to be reaching it works with your slithery badge to help you not get plucked along with unpluckable obviously and it makes it just really easy to get that m1 bucket now the final way is if you're good at dribbling or can utilize your dribble moves i recommend practicing the john wall crossover or or even some of the behind the backs that are not jamal murray if you if for some reason you don't use jamal murray which i use jamal murray i know most people do if you use like a De'Aaron Fox behind the back or some of the other ones that are really wide, you can sort of get space going the opposite direction. All you're trying to do 
is get some space where you're going far left and they're going far right or vice versa. And if they're jumping too far away from you, you can just go up with a strong layup and that contact nine out of 10 times will be a foul call. You can go straight up because they're jumping from too far away or too awkward of an angle. That one's a lot harder to do and it works better against stretches than it does against inside centers. Those are three ways you can draw fouls, adding those moves to your bag. Hop steps, fast attacking layups, floaters, all of them work together, right? And if you can get them all to tie together, your bag will be deeper. Ask questions you have down below. I'll try to answer all of them. And if you want the best layup build in the game, the best scoring build in the game, a prime Kyrie Irving, click the video above. And as always, y'all have a wonderful rest of your day. I'm out of here. Oh, oh no! <laughs> <laughs>